In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate lattice energy using the Born-Haber cycle. So this is a typical problem you may see. It says calculate the lattice energy for NaCl, which is our lattice, based on this data. And you have a list of data, which is essentially just a list of chemical processes, and they give you the energy associated with each chemical process here. And what they usually don't give you are these equations that I've put in black boxes. So let me show you how I got those. So the first chemical process is the heat of formation of NaCl solid. Whenever you're doing a heat of formation equation, you always put the reactants in their standard states. Standard state is roughly room temperature. So we know NaCl is made up of sodium and chlorine. So at room temperature, sodium and chlorine look like this. Sodium is Na solid, chlorine is Cl2 gas. So that's what we put our reactants in. But of course we have to put a one half here in front of the Cl2 because we only need one chlorine to make NaCl solid. Okay, the first ionization energy of sodium gas. Ionization energy refers to the energy given off when you steal an electron from something, or it could be energy absorbed. So sodium gas goes to sodium plus plus this electron that we stole from it. So this is what an ionization looks like. You steal an electron away from something, and since electrons have a negative charge, you leave the product with a plus charge. And of course, it's still in the gaseous state. Okay, now the heat of formation of sodium gas. Again, in heat of formation problems, you always put the reactants in their standard state. So sodium in its standard state is Na solid, and we're making Na gas. So we're simply changing phases here from solid to gas. Okay, the heat of formation of chlorine gas. Again, we find the standard state of chlorine, which is Cl2 gas. We put that as our reactant, and we're making chlorine gas as our product. So the difference here is we're going from Cl2 to Cl. But of course, to balance this equation, we put a one half here in front of the Cl2 because we only want one chlorine on either side. We're essentially taking a Cl2 and splitting it up and we just have one Cl here now. The electron affinity of chlorine gas. So electron affinity is sort of the opposite of ionization energy. Electron affinity is when you give something an electron. So chlorine gas plus an electron goes to chlorine minus gas. So the charge goes down by one because electrons have a negative one charge. Okay, so now that we have all of the equations associated with these chemical processes and we have all of the energies associated with these chemical processes, we can start to think about how a lattice actually forms. So a lattice forms from gaseous reactants. That's very important. These reactants always have to be in the gas phase and they have to have their respective charges. So we know sodium is in group 1A and it was ionized, so it's gonna have a plus one charge. Chlorine is in group 7A, and we gave it an electron, so it's gonna have a minus one charge. They're gonna to come together, and their charges are gonna cancel out, and they're gonna make a neutral lattice, a neutral salt, NaCl solid. So if we apply Hess's law to this process here, it looks like this. The overall enthalpy of the reaction is the energy that it takes to make the lattice. The products are the final salt. The, the product is the lattice, right? That's what we made. And the reactants are these things, the lattice reactants. So Hess's law just takes this overall process here and thinks about it in terms of enthalpy. So the overall enthalpy is the lattice energy. The overall enthalpy of the products is the enthalpy of the final salt or the lattice. And the overall enthalpy of the reactants are, are the enthalpies of these things. So we already have the overall enthalpy of the products, right? They gave us the enthalpy of the final lattice, the final salt. It's negative 411 kilojoules per mole. So this is negative 411. I'll put that here. The lattice energy, or delta H, of the overall reaction, this is what we want. This is what we're solving for. So really now all we need is the overall enthalpy of the lattice reactants, the overall enthalpy of these things. So to figure out the overall enthalpy of these reactants, we have to remember how we got to these things. We didn't start here, right? We started with, with the, these elements in their standard states. So we started with sodium Na solid and chlorine Cl2 gas. But we can use all of this data to figure out the enthalpy of how we got here. So remember, we started with sodium in NaS in the solid state, and we changed that to the gaseous state, right, to get closer to this Na plus gas. That cost 108 kilojoules per mole. So I put an arrow from here to here, 
108. That's how much it cost to get there. Then we had to go from Na gas to Na plus gas. We had to take an electron away from Na gas. That cost 496 kilojoules per mole. So I drew an arrow from here to here and wrote 496. Cl minus gas, in order to get there, we had to start with Cl2 gas. But we actually started with one half Cl2 gas before we uh, changed that into a single Cl gas to balance the equation. And this cost 120 kilojoules. So this is what I put here, this arrow is associated with 120 kilojoules per mole. And then the Cl gas, we gave it an electron to make it Cl minus gas, and that actually gave off 349 kilojoules per mole. So that's why I drew this. So now we can find the overall enthalpy of the reactants by simply adding all of these processes enthalpies together. And that's exactly what I did here. So now all that's left to do is solve for the overall lattice energy. So if you type all this into your calculator, you should get negative 786 kilojoules per mole. Okay, let's do another example. So I want you to calculate the heat of formation or the enthalpy of formation for magnesium fluoride using the following data. So notice how they're not asking for lattice energy this time. They're asking for the heat of formation of the final salt. So they give us all of this data here, and these are all chemical processes, remember, and they all are associated with a certain energy in kilojoules, and I found all of these equations boxed up here in black, and I want to show you how I got those really quickly. So the first ionization energy of magnesium gas, again, ionization energy, is taking away the first electron. So magnesium gas is going to go to magnesium gas plus plus that first electron that we stole. And remember, this is plus because an electron has a minus one charge. When we remove that minus one charge, you're left with a plus one charge there. The second ionization energy of magnesium gas is stealing the second electron from magnesium. So now it's already magnesium gas plus. We already took one away. We're gonna take the second electron away. Now it's gonna be magnesium gas two plus, plus that electron that we stole. Okay, the electron affinity of fluorine gas is going to be adding an electron to fluorine gas, right? Electron affinity is the opposite of ionization energy. This is when you add an electron to something. So we're gonna take fluorine gas, add an electron, now it's gonna be fluorine minus gas. Okay, the heat of formation of magnesium gas, this is, again, we start with the uh, standard state of the reactant, and we know that at, at room temperature, which is roughly a standard state, it's gonna be magnesium solid, so this is our reactant here, and we're simply changing phases to magnesium gas. The heat of formation of fluorine gas, again, what is our standard state for our reactant? Fluorine two, right? Difluorine, it's a diatomic element at room temperature. So we know it's gonna be split apart from F2 just to one of the Fs, and we gotta put this one half here as a coefficient to balance the equation. And again, we have all the energies associated with these processes. And then finally, the lattice energy of magnesium fluoride is negative 2,963 kilojoules. And sometimes they give this to you as a positive number, but I think it makes it easier to just make it negative. You can think about lattice energy as either the energy given off or the energy absorbed. I like to think about it as the energy given off, which makes it negative. And again, whenever you have a lattice formation, the reactants are in the gaseous phase. They're in the gaseous state, and they have their respective charges. And since we have MgF2, we have two fluorines and one magnesium. The one magnesium has a plus two charge to balance out the two minus one charges from the fluorines to make an overall neutral magnesium fluoride solid. And again, we always think about these lattice problems in terms of Hess's law. The overall lattice energy, which is the overall enthalpy of the reaction, is equal to the overall enthalpy of the products, which again is the final salt or the lattice, minus the overall enthalpy of the reactants, which are the lattice reactants. So in this case, they're not asking for the lattice energy, right? They're actually asking for the enthalpy of the final salt. They ask for the heat of formation or the enthalpy of magnesium fluoride salt. That's what they want. They want this right here. So we better have these two things in order to solve for this, right? Well, we know we have the lattice energy. They gave that to us. That's negative 2,963 kilojoules. So I went ahead and put that right there. But now we have to find the enthalpy of the lattice reactants. 
So we know these are the lattice reactants, right? They're the reactants that made the lattice. This was the lattice energy reaction. But we didn't start here, right? We started in our standard states. So magnesium, we started with magnesium solid, right? That was what it was at at room temperature, at standard state. Then we went to magnesium gas. So I drew an arrow from magnesium solid to magnesium gas. That cost 148 kilojoules. Then we went from magnesium gas to magnesium plus gas. Remember, we ionized the magnesium for the first time, and that was associated with 738 kilojoules. And then finally, we had to ionize the magnesium a second time from magnesium plus gas to magnesium two plus gas to get it to its lattice reactant form. That cost 1450 kilojoules. Okay, let's do the same thing for the fluorine. It started at F2 gas, and then we had to go to F gas, right? We had to break apart the F2 into just one F. So we know that F2 went to 2F. We need two of them, right, to balance out this reaction here. We have two fluorines in MgF2. So F2 went to F gas right here, but here we only made one F gas. Here we want two, so I'm actually going to multiply the 79.5 kilojoules by two to account for that. Then we went from two fluorine gas to two fluorine minus gas, right? We gave it an electron. So this was associated with negative 328 kilojoules, this process here. So now we have the enthalpies associated with each step of how we got from the standard state reactants to our lattice reaction reactants. So I hope that made sense. So now we can put all of these numbers in for our overall enthalpy, this E here means the sum of the enthalpies for the reactants, the lattice reactants. I put that all right here, just added up all these numbers together. And again, I'm solving for this. So now it's just an algebra problem. I simply took this term here, added it all together, and then added it to this side, and I got my overall enthalpy of magnesium difluoride or MgF2 to be negative 1,124 kilojoules per mole. So I really hope this video helped you guys out and I'll see you in the next one.